Howdy, and welcome to another standard gameplay video here from the preview event of Outlaws of Thunder Junction, and I'm very excited to present this Teamer Prowess deck, which might very well be the fastest deck in the new standard meta, as we get to play with a slick shot show off a 2 mana, a 1 2 bird wizard with flying and haste. It says whenever we cast a non creature spell, it gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn, and it also has plot for 1 on a red, so we can exile it, and then on the following turns, we can cast it for free, so that can maybe help play around removal, sweeper effects, and other sorcery speed answers. So the slick shot can potentially set up some one-hit KOs, especially when we combine it with pump spells like a giant growth or monstrous rage, increasing its power by three. And then especially with Twin Inferno also giving a double strike until end of turn, we can potentially deal 16 damage as early as turn 3 with just a single attack from the Slick Shot. So those are the types of turns we want to set up with the Slick Shot, and because it has Flying and Haste, it kind of has that built-in evasion, so it's pretty difficult for the opponent to block it. And then our other creatures now also include two copies of the Elusive Otter. And part of why this deck is now possible in Standard is thanks to some of the new dual lands in the mana base. We've got eight new fast lands with Spire Bluff, the Blue Red Fast Land, and Botanical Sanctum. So these allow us to curve out much better. We don't have to play a bunch of Thran portals and other tapped lands which get in the way. And I'm not even playing a basic land since the deck is usually fast enough that cards like Field of Ruin don't really factor into the equation. So we're not too worried about those. And then we still get to play with some of the best one drops in standard, like Monastery Swiss Spear and Kumano. And uh, then we also have the Fugitive Codebreaker as another prowess haste creature, good follow up to Kumano. And in the late game, if we're up against a grindier deck, we can also disguise it to potentially draw a fresh hand. So that can also help. And then uh, our non-creature spells include Consider as a cheap cantrip, can also fill the graveyard for the Codebreaker, adding more instants and sorceries to give it a discount. Then we've got Play with Fire as a cheap removal spell, can also go upstairs letting us scry to improve our draw steps. And every draw step matters when you can potentially win on turn 3. And then Ancestral Anger, another way to give Trample alongside Monstrous Rage to get past any potential chum blockers from decks like the Boros Convoke deck, not that we're gonna face it today. And then we've got, of course, Monstrous Rage, and then Giant Growth is also worth the Green Splash, in addition to the Adventure on Elusive Otter. So it's not a huge cost to include some of these green dual lands, and uh, we may as well play the biggest pump spell for one mana that we can get our hands on. And then Twinferno can occasionally copy a spell, but more often we're going to give a creature a double strike. And then if you were to play this in best of three, there's a lot of kind of defensive pump spells you could play if you're afraid of instant speed removal. In uh, blue and green, there's a ton of ways to give your creatures hexproof in addition to still pumping them up. So it's pretty easy to configure this deck for best of three as well if you're afraid of interaction. But for the most part, we just want to curve out and smash face. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Kumano and two Codebreaker. And then Twinferno could do some damage. Facing Headquarters. So Bant's deck, maybe a ramp variety. Can still attack into Shigeki. And then we're hoping to find our slick shots at some point as well. So Shigeki can get in the way of the Codebreaker, can give a trample, so I don't want to go all in. Now I could consider just to uh, kind of see what's up. Could also Giant Growth plus Twinferno on the etching itself, although it feels like we'll be able to deal more damage with that combo in the future. So main phase consider, in case we find another hasty creature we can play. Swiss Spear is a hasty creature, but it's not the most exciting one. Alright, Ancestral Anger could give Codebreaker Trample. So that's worth a shot. Although we don't have the Twin Inferno available now. So Shigeki soaks up some damage, I'm just gonna let damage happen. And 
and then if I were to Giant Growth we can deal 10 damage total, but next turn we could do more with Twinferno, assuming there's no board wipe. See Portal go to the graveyard and Jace now. Pretty good combo with the uh, Bramble Familiar since you can plot it and then cast a 7 mana side on the following turn. But Jace is just gonna draw and discard. So coast is clear for Giant Growth to Inferno and we can even double Giant Growth to Inferno. So this is going to be a lot of damage. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and uh, sure we can keep this. Turn one Kumano, turn two Otter. Wouldn't be able to consider necessarily unless we draw another blue source. So the mana could be a little awkward. But I think it's still worth it to play Kumano on one. And then maybe we'll play with fire, an opposing creature. Put on black white with the inspector. So not sure yet uh, if it's worth using play with fire here. The new pest control would be pretty effective on this board, but if they're playing inspector they're probably not playing pest control. So sure, let's just uh, deal with the inspector now. They might use it for convoke later anyways. And then... Uh, See if they can flash in some blockers, or if they're planning to sack the clue. I think I do want to try and hit my land drop, so we'll consider. And then say no to a monstrous rage. Okay. Can attack and see what's up. Opponent's gonna take it. So not opposed to just uh, play with fire face. To get an extra prowess and then maybe combine Monstrous Rage with Twinferno next turn. While getting some card selection. Now if they do have a board wipe, we're gonna be pretty sad. Just a wedding announcement, that's fine. So take our turn, attack, and then we can Monstrous Rage and Twinferno on the Otter, which should be lethal. Fourteen damage from the Otter alone. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Swiss Peer into Codebreaker, bunch of ways to enable prowess, and we've got all our colors, so can't complain. Turn one Wormlet. Might have to take that out next turn. Or I could do it now. And then miss out on the Codebreaker, but I don't really want to attack into the Wormlet, even though they might take it. If they trade, I'll be pretty disappointed. So we can just uh, play with fire and consider here. Not opposed to a third land, although we may end up drawing one anyways. And then now Kumano is also an option. Even though we're not dealing with a Wormlet, I'll still be able to take it out next turn. And it's good to get Kumano going. So 
So if they don't grow the Wormlets, we could just play Codebreaker with an extra counter. Okay, 2-2 two, two first strike lifelink is kind of a must answer. So I can play Swiss Spear, attack with both, and then Giant Growth, assuming they block. Or we could just play with Fire, but then I'm not using the plus one counter from Kumano. So yeah, let's just go for Swiss Spear plus Giant Growth. Staying back with us with Spear was also reasonable. Salvagers next. So your opponent can saddle with a steed and uh, make a token. Yeah, staying uh, back would have worked out a lot better. So let's see here, points at 14. I can cast three spells potentially. So maybe we'll start there. Slick shot could be nice. So let's say we attack all out, opponents blocks etching with the angel. Then I can still Giant Growth play with fire, that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, plus 6 is... yeah, that's lethal. So I guess we'll go for it. Opponent's just gonna take it. That works too. Alright. Maybe the sequencing could have been better, but I guess the deck is just good enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with uh, Keepable Hand, missing blue mana, but Kumano into Swiss Spear is always going to be good. And Jadar's next, making a zombie. So we can double Swiss Spear. And then next turn maybe combine Giant Growth with Twinferno. Alright, opponent on a Skeleton deck. Feel pretty comfortable racing. So how much damage are we talking here? We Giant Growth Swiss Spear, Twinferno, so two prowess triggers. 4, 7, 14, so yeah, that should just be lethal. Not bad. Turn 3 kill. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Maybe get to see our slick shot in action at long last. Start with a Swiss spear since we may end up using the adventure. Alright, against green whites, I think we can just play the slick shots without needing to plot it first. I would love to draw Monster's Rage. Alright, Blooming Marsh will complicate matters a little bit. Gonna be a steed next. 
Okay. So we could set up a Twinferno turn, although it's without an actual pump spell. So instead, maybe we just go Kumano, Consider, and Otter, starting with Consider. Codebreaker doesn't seem needed. I've got enough creatures as is. Find another show off. So we could uh, play it here, or we can just get a nice attack in and put an otter on the board as well. And then next turn the show off, we'll pick up a counter perhaps. So an untapped land would be reasonable. Any one mana spell is good. Although our opponent will get to make a flyer, which can get in the way of the slick shot. So that's unfortunate. Giant growth we cannot cast. So yeah, not ideal. If we could cast a giant growth, we would be in pretty good shape. Now I probably can... Let's see. Do I even attack? Could just cast a slick shot past a turn. And then we can maybe block the steed. And then if we draw a green source we can set up our giant growth combo. If I attack all out they probably block the slick shots. And we're not getting in for a lot of damage. Alright, so I'll just have to settle for Slick Shot Pass. Although if we can keep one of the Slick Shots alive at least, we can still maybe combo with one of the two unblocked ones. Mobile Homestead. Three three haste. Finds a land. Okay, uh, probably just gonna take it here. Don't want to put a slick shot in harm's way. And seeker can find another mount. All right, found Monstrous Rage, that's nice. So we should be able to set up a nice attack with, at the very least, our Flyers. So they block the largest one. I can still Monstrous Rage to Inferno. And to Inferno for double strike. Should be plenty. Sweet, onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Kumano sets up turn to Otter plus Swift Spear. Or maybe Swift Spear to pick up the plus one counter first. Codebreaker also an option. Vraskan joins up to let them draw with legendary creatures in the future. Yeah, Codebreaker might be alright. Having a higher powered creature can set up a more lethal to Inferno later. Although if they play something like uh, Glissa next turn, it can hold off our attacks. So then we'll need Double Strike, which I guess on a three powered creature is still fine. Yeah, let's go for Codebreaker. 
there's a world where we might want to play it face down first, but don't see that happening with this current hand. It's gonna be Gix. Okay, Slick Shot's nice too, especially with Giant Growth to Inferno in hand. So I could attack all out if they block with Gix, we could Giant Growth. At which point I would prefer playing Swiss Spear first, although we could always play Otter second main. And if they take it, I'll just maybe plot the Slick Shot to set up for next turn. Opponent takes it, so can let damage happen. And with an untapped lane next turn, which all our lands come into play untapped next turn, we might be able to set up our giant growth to inferno combo. Shieldred's not gonna stop that. Although they do draw two cards with Vraska joins up. No untapped land, unfortunately. I can attack with what I have. And then giant growth plus consider to maybe hit my land drop. Although I won't have the giant growth to go with slick shot if they do decide to block. If they take it, then let's say we twin Ferno the code breaker. That's eight plus two is ten, which is not quite enough. Yeah, that's a tough one. Could also leave Codebreaker back to block a Gix and just attack with Etching. Opponent takes it. And then I'm gonna wanna consider to hit my land drop. Which we found. And then safest play, maybe Swiss Spear and pass, or just Code Breaker and pass. And then we've got to win basically in hand. So as long as we survive, we should be okay. See so how much damage are we talking about next turn? So we trigger this twice, so that's up to five. Up to 8, so that's 16 damage just from the Slick Shot alone. So we can block Gix. And then if I Trump Shield it, they don't gain any life. I'm happy if they tap out and use Plaza to protect Gix. Do we see them use Plaza? We do. So opponent's pretty much tapped out. And Tiny Bones is not gonna change that. Okay, should be game here. Curious to see if they block, they don't. Not that we needed etching to connect. And there we have it. Awesome. Well, those were some pretty brutally efficient games. And uh, could keep going, but yeah, so far the deck is undefeated. Now, of course, we're playing this in the preview event as opposed to the ranked ladder. But uh, to be fair, I feel like this deck has pretty good game against, let's say, a Boros Tokens deck, since uh, we've got our Slick Shot to just fly over and ignore most of the opponent's creatures. 
And then we even have some ways to give Trample to maybe get past some tokens as well. The Elusive Otter can also help with the ability. So we do have some pretty good tools to beat the Boros deck, and it feels like we're like half a turn or a turn faster than their deck, even with some of their best draws. So yeah, I'm quite excited to see where this deck goes next and how the deck evolves over time. But for now, this seems like a very good starting point, and I'm also happy we got to see some wins with Twinferno. So it's also very much possible we want a third or fourth copy of Twinferno, just because it helps at closing out games and plays quite well with her slick shot. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!